Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at Flask debug hacking. Flask is a really common Python web framework, and one of the features it offers is a debug mode. In this mode, when your application crashes, it not only gives you like a standard stack trace, but also the ability to drop into a Python REPL or shell at that point and run commands to figure out what's going wrong. Um, any hacker or pen tester immediately is going to perk up at this mention, right? Because that's remote code execution. Um, Flask knew this was dangerous, and uh, it's got all sorts of warnings about not running this in production, but it still happens. Um, Flask added a pin feature in version.11 back in 2015 uh, that creates a pin that prints at the console when Flask runs. So in theory, only developer running via the command line can access it and unlock the terminal. But the pin is calculated based on information on the running system. And that means if we have the ability to read files on the target host, because in Linux, basically everything is a file, we can generate that pin on our own. So in this video, we are going to start with a really simple Flask application and show debug mode. We're going to look at the work zerg code that generates the pin. We are going to look through some of the common guide out there for hacking the pin and show um, that they don't always take into account what happens when the script is started with a server like GUnicorn. Uh, and then we're going to show how to get the pin in that case. Um, there will be a part two to this video that comes out in the next week or so um, that shows actually applying this to a uh, CTF event and uh, using it to solve and actually get execution on a remote host. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so we're going to start with a super simple Python Flask app. Um, this is, so we import Flask and we're going to make, create a Flask object and call it app. That's the app. Um, at the bottom here, we're going to call app.run. We can give it a port, a host. Um, we can also specify debug mode, which we'll do in a minute. Um, and then in the middle, we're going to define our routes. Um, for more complicated apps, you're going to want to define your routes in separate files and import them, et cetera. But for our, our dummy app here, we're just going to have a simple hello world um, where we get a name and an int with some default values if they're not specified, and we would print them back to the screen. Um, so we can come down here. Uh, we're going to create a virtual environment to run out of. In fact, I'm going to use one virtual environment for this whole thing. So we'll say Python minus M V E N V, and then the name of the virtual environment folder. So we'll, we'll just call it virtual environment. Um, and that's going to create it. Um, yes, we will use that. Um, so then to activate it, we'll do source uh, V N V bin activate. And now, you know, if I do like which Python, shows me that I'm running out of this VENV. So there's actually a Python binary in the virtual environment that that's what I'm running in. Uh, so I can do things like pip install flask and get the flask binary. Perfect. Um, and now I can do Python. Uh, we better do, let's see, cd add part one. And we can do Python app.py. And we are running our flask server. It's listening on localhost and my IP on port 8000. Uh, we can open up a web browser here and do 127.0.0.1.8000. And we have hello world favorite number 223. Uh, we can interact with this. So we can say, um, should we put, oh, do I, can dark mode go on this? Can dark reader turn you on? Oh, yeah. Sweet. It's actually a little dark mode. Um, I can do things like uh, name equals hello. And now it just says hello, hello. Uh, I can do things like, um, and num equals five. Now if we can change the number, um, you know, we can also crash this, right? So if we are calling, if we crash in num equals not a number, we get an internal service or server error. So this thing crashed, and this is basically what you want to see in prod. Really want to handle these things and move on. Um, but you know, you don't, that's the kind of errors you want. Um, we can, Flask has a debug mode and uh, we can kill this. Oh, I guess the one thing I should show if we come in here and we refresh this, let's make it actually good again, number seven. Um, let's say we change it. We want to say like, uh, we want to say, hello, favorite number is bang, uh, break, break, goodbye. We save this. If we come back here and refresh, we don't get that page. And so we have to actually come over here, uh, kill the running server. We can restart the server. Now, if we refresh, we have our goodbye here with our exclamation point. Um, so that's that's just how it behaves in this current mode. If we put it in debug mode, true, uh, we're going to get a handful of things that are different. So we'll have to kill and restart to get that to process. Um, right away, we can see it is debugger is active, and it gives us the debugger pin. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, we can uh, 
we can still do our normal stuff, but now if I put in like uh, a non-integer here, um, instead of just getting that server error page, I get this detailed page, and it's gonna show me exactly where it crashed. And you'll see actually these little icons over here. I wonder if I can make this a little bigger. Um, with a terminal, and if I click on these, um, it's actually showing me a console here that I can interact with and run Python commands. But I need the pin. Um, so right now we can grab it. We can, we can just grab the pin because we were running out of the console. That This is how it was intended to work. Uh, we put the pin in, we hit save, and now we can do things like um, os.popenid.read, and now we can see the results. So we just re-executed that command, right? Um, so how, where did that pin come from and what is it, what is it for? Um, let's go back over to VS Code real quick. Um, we can, let's do an open, oops, control O, if that can work. Uh, out of here, we'll go into the venv, lib, python, site packages, work, work, I never know how to say this, work zerg, work zug, um, debug, and then here's our init.py. We can take a look at this is where the, this is where the uh, pin gets generated. In fact, if we scroll down here, here's hash pin, so return hash lib of this stuff, um, get machine ID, scrolling down, and so let's see, get, get pin and cookie name. And so you'll see um, if the pin is set in the environment variable, it sets it right here. Um, if it's set to off, it returns none. Um, it potentially breaks things up. Let's see, um, skipping down. So we're getting the module name, we're getting the username. They're really, they, it, there's these two sets here. So there's a list here called probably public, public bits, which has a username, a mod name, um, basically the name of the app and the name of a module, and then some private bits, which is the UUID git node, which is the um, MAC address of the machine, um, and then the machine ID, which that function we saw, we kind of skipped through at the top. And then basically it takes these things and puts them all together, updates them, and adds in a salt, and is taking a big, it's basically doing a SHA-1 hash. Um, one trick to be aware of, older versions of works, work, curg, zerg, whatever, zig, um, use the MD5 here and it's updated. So you'll need to, you want to check and you might want to check and see if this is SHA-1 or MD5 um, if you're trying to hack this, for example. Um, but we can see how this works. Um, in fact, there is a hack tricks page that I've referenced in the past um, and it, that actually shows um, the similar stuff. And you can see the probably public bits, the private bits, and there's even this script here at the bottom, which we can grab that is basically if you can fill in these, if you can fill in these six things, then you can generate the pin on your own. You don't need to be on the machine. Um, and the rest of this is just all code yanked from the works curve debug init file. Um, so if you have access to read files on the machine, you can get all this information. And that that's really what it comes down to is if we have a file read vulnerability, a local file includes something that lets us get files off the machine, we can start to fill this information out. Um, and so in fact, let's, we can do that now. Um, grab this here and come back over to VS Code. Um, I'm going to here in part one create pin.py. We will paste this in. We need it at the top. So we know the user I'm running as is OXDF. Um, the these two the the guides you read. If we go by these guides, um, and we're going to show where this is wrong in a minute show that you basically just always want flask app and flask here. Um, that ends up being wrong, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, the full path here to the um, app.py, we can actually get, oops, let's see, I grabbed from the other, where's my other window? Uh, right here at the top line, you can see the full path to the app.py, so we can grab that. Um, and we can update here. Um, we're gonna need to get the, the MAC address. Um, I actually got quite stuck trying to get ready for this video with this part right here um, in a way that I had never been stuck before. Um, it seems, and Ip Ipsec and I were just playing with this, trying to see if we could figure out exactly what was going on. It seems like on at least Ubuntu desktop, the UUID git node function does not return a number based on the MAC address like it's supposed to. I don't know if this is a bug in Python or what, but on Ubuntu server, it works fine. Um, and those are the two OSs we played with. Um, so. I think in general, when you if you ever if you were to see this in the wild, you would be dealing with a server, so it's probably not a big deal. But it's worth keeping in the back of your mind. This could be a sticking point that just gets you stuck. At this point, I don't know what the actual number being returned from Ubuntu Desktop is, um, 
but I can say it's not the MAC address. So in general, the guide guide you read about how to exploit this will show you, you know, find a way to read, you know, you can leak out what the device name is here, like ENS 333 or ETH0 or whatever, and then you can get it out of this file, Sith, Sith class net, the device name address, and convert it to an integer and put it right here. Um, and that will work if you're work targeting at least say Ubuntu desktop, probably most OSs, but it doesn't work for some reason on Ubuntu desktop. So um, I'm going to cheat a little bit here because at least for this example, I wanted I need to be on a desktop so I could show you all of this. Um, so we are just going to do, do this the cheap way and say import UUID, uh, UUID dot get node. And we will grab this number right here. And then we need the last thing we need is the get machine ID. Um, we'll just go ahead and get that. Let's see. Um, so that is cat Etsy machine ID. It's right here. I think we actually need one more piece. Um, I don't think this works right here. We can try uh, Python part one and pi. Um, that is not matching what we had here. Yes, we need the, um, they show it in the guide. Oops, wrong window. Uh, we need to get also the first line of the first line of proc self C groups after the slash. So we can do cat proc self C groups. Uh, we actually need the, not self. We need it on the web server itself. So we can do, um, let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? We can do PS AUX dub dub grep uh app.py so we have the address right here so we can do cat proc this number right here c groups head one and we need that i believe that goes right there save that is a match so we've we've been able to, we've generated the pin on our own, um, with the one exception being that we couldn't on my machine read the actual uh, you, you get node, but we in general that tends to work when you run into it in the wild. Um, so we've generated the pin. Um, now flash debug is not that common in the wild, but if you are going to see it, um, it's much more likely that you're not going to be seeing it run like this, like Python app.py. It's probably going to be behind some kind of server, like a G unicorn um, or a UV unicorn. There's a bunch of there's a handful of these, um, and it's probably maybe behind an application like Nginx. Um, and so the standard way of, ch of running this with G unicorn um, changes the way the pin is calculated. So we're going to take a look at that, um, and that's this part two. We're going to go into part two. Um, we have a little bit more complex of setup. Typically, you're going to see like your application in a in Hello World, for example. And then you'll have like a WSGI file for starting the application. Um, we can kill this. Let's see. We are still in our virtual environment. We can go up one. Oops. Part two. Uh, we can pip install G unicorn like that. And so now you, what you'd see in the wild probably is something like um, G unicorn, and then like WSGI colon app. And what that's going to do is it's going to say, go to the WSGI pi file and find the app object. And then here, that's actually going to be imported from hello app world.py slash app. So with Python, um, when you have things in here, this can either be a file or it can be an ob it can be a um, object in a file. So this in fact is going to be, or a directory, for example. So this is going to be the hello world directory, the app.py file, and then it's going to get the app object in there. And so if we click in here, you know, it's going to get this Flask object, and it's going to pass that to G Unicorn, which is going to run it. Um, so if we see it like that, we know the the WSGI.py WSGI.py is what's running. Um, unicorn. So if we run this with WSGI, that um, that's going to work just fine. It's running. We can come over here and uh, see that. Um, we are still in debug mode. Um, I've managed to set this up. Getting this set up in debug mode is actually much trickier. Um, we've got this enable debug function here, um, which we're calling both here if we run it through main or in WSGI if we run it there. Um, and it's using this workscurg debug debugged application. Um, 
and this is where it actually sets app WSGI app. Um, so this is, uh, this is all, I don't like totally go into the details of what this does, but I've got a bunch of examples from uh, blog posts, from uh, Stack Overflow and other sites like that, showing this kind of pattern where you set this up and this is how you can make this work under something like G-Unicorn. So, um, and you can see this is actually working. We were in debug mode. So um, when you've got something like this, it's gonna change what the pieces of our pin are. And so what we can do to take a look at this, um, let's see, we can get out of here. Let's not be in, um, with, with G-Unicorn, I'm not gonna be able to see, for example, you can see when I run this, it didn't print the pin out. Um, and I wanna be able to receive prints. Um, luckily for us, while it wouldn't, doesn't give us the benefits of running under G-Unicorn, we can just also do, oops, Python WSGI, and it works fine. And you can see actually it prints the pin, debug is active in the pin three times. It actually generates three different pins. Um, and that's because there's three different app contexts in which the pin is generated. Um, in my experience, it's the first one that gets used, but you might have to try the different ones. Um, and to see, let, we want to see how that's generated. So what we're going to do, um, we are in here, in our file, that is generating it, I'm gonna go ahead and actually update this file so we can see it. So after we generate public bits and private bits, we'll do print, uh, I think it's probably public bits, private bit, like that. And we can save and we can run that again. And now you can see right, up, right away, we can see, we actually print out the three things. And so we can look across these. And so like the username, OXDF is staying the same constantly. Um, the name of the application, Flask app, is staying, but this next one um, is changing. So we have WSGI app, we have debugged application, and we have Flask. Um, this is the pin that the guides tell us to make, but it's not the one that's going to work here. It's actually the one up here so that's going to work. Um, the rest of this stuff, this full path to the app.py, um, this one works. This one comes, this is the Flask application. Again, that's the good hint. That's the one we want to use. Um, versus this one is within the de the init.py for debug. Um, and then this one is uh, actually the Flask site packages. Okay. Um, the node, I, the git node is returning the same in all three cases, as is this uh, um, machine ID C groups one from the private. So the thing that's really changing is the, the names, you know, these, these last three public, probably public, probably public bits. Um, so it's important to pay attention to that. And in this case, you know, we're gonna want, if we're launching in this style, this WSGI app is what we're gonna want. Um, in general, if you run into an application like this in the wild, what you're gonna wanna do is figure out how it's running. So you can look at the process processes or look at um, if you can find a service file, um, a command line of the, if, you know, if you've got the file read through the current file, you can do the command line um, through proc. Then if you can figure out how it's running, you can start to grab the files you need and build up yourself like a little skeleton project. You don't have to have all the details, but make the same imports, the same kind of stuff and run it, you know, with this kind of, you know, hack in here, this print statement. So you can actually see how it's running and you can see the different variables being used um, and that'll help you troubleshoot it. So um, I'm going to call it here. I will actually come out, be coming out with a part two in this video within the next week or so that shows how this applies um, to an actual um, CTF machine in the wild and we'll actually go through and solve it. So, um, but for now, in general, this is kind of the theory on a toy application. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging around with me till the end. I will uh, talk to you next time. Bye.